Uh, now, our next guest made the headlines back in 2005 when they were granted the first ever civil partnerships in the UK. And now they're opening their lavish lifestyle to the cameras. They are self-made millionaires Terry George and Michael Rothwell. And they're the focus of a new Fly on the Wall documentary series. It's called Two Queens and a Castle. And they are here. Very good morning, Hi, Terry good and morning. Michael. Uh, so we get an insight into your life and in this six-part series. Before we talk to you about it, let's have a little clip of the show. It's Monday morning. Terry and Michael are at the office. As usual, Michael is hard at work looking after the money. And down the corridor, Terry and his PA, Mark, have been spending some of it. For months, they've been working on a birthday present for Michael, collating photographs to create a book of his eventful life over the last 40 years. I was just going to give him this, but what I'd like to do is maybe organise a really surprise party. I was thinking um, a Moroccan thing would be good. Okay. Or Arabian Nights. I like that. That's a good idea. You know, I was thinking we could have stuff like camels. Where would you get a real camel from? Terry may have big ideas, but it's his trusty PA Mark that has to do all the work. He needs to go away in the morning and then come back and everything's there in the afternoon. No, it'll be good. Well, we haven't done for a long, long time. Well, he hasn't been to a health spa. You get on with that, right? I just wanted to see if you rented camels. I'm just trying to get hold of a camel. We're looking for a real camel for a party. No, no, I don't, I don't think we could have one imported. There's only a few days to organise a surprise party, and things have not exactly got off to a great start. I tell you what, I think, Terry, you get the best deal there. You just sit there and say, get me a... Ostrich, camel, it dinosaur, whatever, and someone has to go do it. It makes me look so lazy, you know, it's unfair. <laughs> it is, really. <laughs> He'll say that. I, just, I put so much hard work into organising that party. Aww. You know, and the worst thing as well is, is keeping it a secret from him. I He's know, because so it was your Yeah, it was a surprise 40th birthday party, so yeah. it was... Uh, now, how do you organise a surprise birthday party and keep it a complete secret from the person whose birthday party it is when the whole thing's being filmed? And you haven't just got to ask the people close to you to keep it a secret, you've got to ask a whole film crew to keep it secret as well. Well, the film crew weren't the difficult ones, it's his friends that are difficult. <laughs> and uh, there's one friend in particular who just tells him everything what's going on. And did, did he tell you? He didn't, no, actually. I, would have, I went crazy with him because he didn't, but no, he didn't, and it was a complete surprise, so it, now, was, it was amazing. I explained to a lot of people who might think uh, fly on the wall documentaries people sometimes think they on the face of it sounds great you know people are interested in our lives what why did you think it was a good idea to let the cameras follow you because they can be terribly intrusive and people can be very judgmental watching things and no matter what the issue they can be very judgmental about you personally what why did you want to do it well I'm quite a public person and I, I pretty much like the limelight, I have to admit. But Michael's quite the opposite, aren't you? Yeah. Um, and it was a lot of persuasion from me, really. Uh, we, we had a friend who worked in television and said, you know what, it'd be great to do a fly in the wall documentary about you two because your lives are so interesting. You get up to so many different things, you know, and people would love to see that. So I'm hoping it's a good idea and, and people might take it for the spirit that it was, was, was intended. What really. were you worried about, Michael? Um, we do so many different things, you know, you know, it could look flamboyant, uh, you know, having parties and doing bits and pieces and I, I didn't want to be portrayed in the, in the wrong way because, you know, we, what we do is we work really, really hard, um, you know, we employ a lot of staff and, I, I, you know, I, did, I didn't want to just look that, it was just all mm. party all the time, which it isn't really, you know. You didn't want rubbing in people's faces. No, that's right, yeah, so I wanted a good balance come yeah. across, which I hope has happened. You are self-made millionaires, aren't you? I mean, you've, you came you, from not very much to create a really successful business. What, yeah, what, you, you know, just... when, I, when I was 18, I was working in a warehouse in, in Manchester, stacking shelves, and met Terry, and uh, Terry was working in a, pic, a pickle factory at the time in Leeds, and um, we just slowly started. Can't get that smell off my fingers. <laughs> we, just, we just slowly started from there, you know, we, we, we've been together ever since, and we just, you know, built up businesses after businesses. It was, it's been a hard struggle, but, you know, we've got to where we are today through hard work. Yeah. Can I ask you about the, the title of the program? It's Two Queens and a Castle. Mm. Yeah. Now, did you, did you have a say in that? Did you, do you approve of the title? Do you worry that it kind of instantly makes people think about you in a certain way? Well, what do you think about that? Well, I think it started because we live in a, a, a castellated folly. You know, it's a castle in a sense. And, you know, we're two gay men, and, of course, gay men get called queens. To some people, it might be offensive, but... For us, it, yeah, it's, you know, a bit, it's a bit of fun. It's fun, yeah. I mean, I don't get offended by calling the queen. Do you, Charlie? Is it? Don't offend me. No, but I <laughs> mean, I, you can joke about it, but you know what I'm talking about. I mean, in certain circumstances, coming from some people, the term queen could be offensive. Mm. Yeah. And I just, I mean, I, I understand your point. That yeah. you, you don't, you're not worried about it, and you, and you are comfortable with it. Yeah. But to put it up there in the title, in a way, it's almost, is it sort of 
pushing the boundaries a bit? Is that part of the idea? Well, I think we, that's what we're a little bit about. We do push the boundaries. We own a magazine called Bent. You know, and when we when we had that title originally, people were a little bit standoffish and thought it was you know a bit offensive. But they've quickly come round to the idea that I think the more you use the word, the less offensive it becomes. Um, and hopefully that will be with, with the program as well. Mm. Well, it's lovely to see you and lovely to talk to you this morning, Terry George and Michael. You're Russell. very brave to put yourselves in the in the spotlight. Now. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much for coming. Thanks for your company this Thank morning. You. Uh, if you have satellite or cable, you can catch Two Queens in the Castle tonight. It's on the Biography Channel and it's on at 9.30 this evening. 9 o'clock. Oh, it's on at 9 o'clock. There we go. <laughs> Thank goodness you're here. <laughs> That's why you're a self-made millionaire. Yeah. Doesn't make mistakes. <laughs>